let's talk about aspirin because I love aspirin. So, you know, I, I don't really like TPA that much. I love aspirin. So there were nine studies in this Cochrane review with 42,000 people, which, yes, is much more, approximately 10 times more than what they had in the, in the TPA studies. And what they find? Well, IST3 was a garbage study. IST1, not a bad study. They actually looked at heparin and aspirin. Heparin wasn't very good. Aspirin was pretty good. And the CAST trial, which is a Chinese study, you could give the aspirin within 48 hours. No one has ever done the study of what happens if you know, your door to aspirin time was actually really quick. Okay, because this is a really easy drug to administer quickly. And honestly, even if I had an intracranial hemorrhage, you gave me an aspirin, I'm not going to be too mad at you. But no one's ever done that study of let's try to get aspirin within three hours or something. So giving aspirin within two days actually showed a mortality benefit. So let's look at the number needed to treat. So number needed to treat of 79 for death or dependence with aspirin. No TPA study has ever shown a mortality benefit. It just doesn't exist. Number needed to treat for complete recovery of 89 and 108 for all death, not just related to death and disability, that combined outcome. So this is really good data for a drug that's free. So aspirin versus TPA, it's a slam dunk, okay? There's no major negative trials of aspirin versus tons for TPA. Aspirin is essentially free versus TPA costing approximately 2,000. When I wrote this slide, in the last two years, the cost of this drug has increased by more than 50%. For a drug that's old, I, they're just getting you. Number needed to treat of 79 to reduce death versus number needed to treat that I believe is infinite. And it, it can be given any time in the first 48 hours versus we don't really know how long for, for TPA. And then the risk of intracranial hemorrhage on aspirin is really low. You have to treat about 600 people before you're going to have a brain bleed versus 20 for, for TPA. And no one's talking about it. This, uh, this chart, I think, kind of drills at home um, that aspirin versus TPA for, for STEMI, very similar. For stroke, it's just much better drug. Unbelievably, and this is one of the things that I, I just can't get over, they actually prevented you from using aspirin in those positive TPA trials. This was the IRB asleep at the wheel. I often can't stand how much research is not done because of fear of what the IRB is going to say. I, it's, it's terrible. There's a lot of important research that we really can't get done in this country because IRB is restricting it. Unbelievably, the standard of care for a stroke before TPA existed was you give them an aspirin. When they put people in the placebo arm of TPA groups, they did not get aspirin. So all that stuff I just told you about the roughly one in a hundred gets their life saved and gets complete recovery, all that didn't happen because nobody got aspirin, not the placebo group and not the TPA side. And they could have done the studies that way and they didn't because they're lazy. They could have randomized you get a saline shot and a real aspirin versus a dummy aspirin and a TPA shot in the other arm. They did not do that. So not only are the trials even without the aspirin kind of equivocal in my reading, it actually is an indirect evidence that TPA is much worse than aspirin. Okay, because TPA versus nothing was equivocal, but aspirin actually helped. I have no idea how that was allowed to happen. Stroke focused nursing care, really important. It turns out you put these people on the rehab floor with some good nurses, they do better than if you just park them on the wing of pick your least favorite hospital floor. And, uh, and, and so this is really important to get people up and moving. Patient selection, also very, very problematic. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that really angers me is I actually believe TPA helps some people. We just don't know what they are. It's obvious from the heart attack literature that it took us a while to find ST elevation was the thing that separates people that need lytics or a cath lab right this second from those that don't. That actually took years. I know it sounds obvious because the entirety of my medical career, everyone knew if, you, if you're having a STEMI, we got to act on it right this second. And if you're having an in STEMI, then we don't, that we actually have a few hours and we shouldn't push lytics. We do not have this for stroke. No one knows that thing that crosses the line between STEMI and NSTEMI, and we're not going to find out because no one is doing these trials. So we're not going to figure out exactly what vessels can be occluded, how bad your severity needs to be, and so forth, because no one's doing the trials anymore. 